And with some additional palm muting from my right hand to separate the notes just a little bit, I get a cool sound like that, for example. What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. In this one I'd like to show you a super fast, really unique picking technique. This is something very special I've been working on over the last couple of years and I'm very excited to share it with you guys and girls today. So let's not waste any more time and start right away. So this technique that I would like to show you today is very closely related to the classic sweep picking approach. Sweep picking is also a topic that you guys voted for on the lesson wishlist for this month on patreon.com slash Bernd. In case you haven't heard it already, my patrons get to vote on the lesson topics that I feature on this channel each month. And when you join my community over there, you also get to download the tabs, get the profiles and practice backing tracks for each lesson. So my main goal with this new picking approach is number one, speeding up the arpeggios even more. And no, speed is not the most important factor when it comes to guitar playing. But as you probably know by now, I really enjoy pushing my technique beyond certain limits. And the second goal with this approach is coming up with more interesting and unique sweep picking sections. Because it's not always the best choice for your song if you just stick with this one approach or even this one shape. <laughs> So let's discuss this different picking approach right now. The one thing that makes traditional sweep picking really hard is that we're still playing single notes with our left hand, occasionally including hammer-ons and pull-offs. So my left hand has to work quite hard and we don't want the notes to overlap. So naturally that makes it really hard to speed up this technique. Like we discussed on this channel before, it's essentially a combination of two different things. Our left hand is essentially in solo mode, so to say, similar to when we're playing a regular guitar solo using a scale, for example. So mostly focusing on single notes and occasionally working with hammer-ons and pull-offs. But our right hand is essentially in chord mode, so to say. So similar to arpeggiating a chord. So the big thing that actually led to this new sweep picking approach is reducing the arpeggio in size. So essentially just playing on the top three strings, for example, on the G, B and E string. And I'm keeping my fingers pressed against the fretboard like that, so I'm not thinking in individual notes, like with the usual sweep picking approach. And with some additional palm muting from my right hand to separate the notes just a little bit, I get a cool sound like that, for example. So a really cool effect that kind of reminds me of video game music. Let's have a closer look at the sonic benefits of this technique with a practical demonstration. As always, you can download the tabs, get the profiles and practice backing tracks for this section on patreon.com slash Bernd. And by the way, still around 70% of you guys and girls watching these lessons are not subscribed to the channel yet. That means you keep missing a lot of videos that might really help you out with your technique and music theory skills. So right now is the perfect time to join this guitar community by subscribing. So I'm essentially just working with the top notes of the classic E minor arpeggio. That is essentially the sound that I'm thinking of, but I'm just playing B, E and B once again. So the good news is that my left hand really doesn't have to do a lot of work when it comes to this technique. My fingers are just pressed against the fretboard like that and later I can just move my pinky finger around for example to alter the shape a little bit. So my right hand has to do all the hard work. So as you can see, it's very similar to the classic sweep picking approach. The biggest difference in sound is obviously that I'm letting the notes overlap here consciously. And the biggest difference and challenge concerning technique is lining up the notes correctly. So the note spacing has to be accurate. And I'm also repeating the top and the bottom notes of the voicing with down and up strokes. So when I'm sweeping in this direction, when I'm letting my hand fall, basically, I'm of course ending with a downstroke, but then I have to turn around the motion and I'm playing the same note with an upstroke again, which can be quite confusing in the beginning. So 
So that could be a great exercise at the beginning, just playing in one direction slowly, focusing on not picking the strings individually. As you can see, I'm not playing like that. There's no individual picking motion for each string. I'm not playing down strokes, I'm just letting my hand fall, just sweeping in this direction. And that is the reason why I can speed it up so easily. So for exercise number one, you can just let your hand fall, but also play the first note of the returning direction. And as soon as you start to get a better feeling for that, you can start working with the repeating pattern, just going up and down. And the most important detail of this technique that I can't stress enough is that we are not playing just a random amount of notes. It hopefully doesn't sound like that to you. We really want to make sure to play in time and we are playing triplets right here. So one, two, three, two, two, three, and so on. So even when you speed this up to ridiculous tempos, you really want to focus on playing in time right here and playing the correct note values with the correct note spacing. That's the main reason why it sounds so cool when you play it fast, so please don't just think of this as a cheap trick or something like that. And of course the final step of mastering this technique is working with different shapes and playing some more creative material like the practical demonstration that I played for you. So here I'm switching between different arpeggio shapes and sounds. I'm also working with diminished shapes, for example. And of course, this kind of cadence always sounds really cool. We can dive into that in a different lesson. Don't forget to download the tabs and get the profiles for the section in case you want to learn it in detail. I really hope that you enjoyed this short introduction into my new picking technique. I don't know if I can claim that I'm the very first guy that ever thought of playing like that, but I didn't really come across this exact approach anywhere else. So please make sure to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong and let me know about other players that are using a similar playing style. I'd love to check that out. In the end, make sure to subscribe so you never miss another video lesson again. And in case you want to support this channel and the creation of more guitar lessons like that, you can also check out the merch on Teespring. As always, I left a link in the description. Thanks a lot for your continued support and for tuning in today. I will hopefully see you again in the next video lesson. All the best and have a lot of fun working on this until then.